money to have AM into Axe because of counter spell into the dunk. Right. Uh, we saw it last that time. That was funny last game. You, know, you, yeah. you got one Culling Blade stack, one armor, <laughs> and made uh, that offlane AM unkillable. So it's something to watch out for here. Still, I, I want to see if Lil Nick has a better time. Like, theoretically, he should with Axe Techies. But if you play your cards right in door, it's still not straightforward. Like once you take two strength away, two stacks of decay onto Lil Nick, it feels awkward for the axe to try to trade. But AM, you you can get run down still on the axe if you're not careful. I, I think it's it's a lot of the pressure is on uh, the pause four to make sure that these things don't happen. So Giants gonna have to work overtime to ensure the Undying can't just have free reign. And you always complain about this techies here as well. Like the, the range is huge. There's no excuse to get double decayed in this lane against uh, the Undying. You should be able to have free reign in terms of harassment here as the as the techies. But let's see if that's how it's going to pan out. Bounty Rune's going to be a uh, two for two. No, three for one. So it is going to be in favor of Tilted Boys. Happy days for them. A very nice little start with the gold boost. Of course, we, we can't start with the mid lane. I mean, it's a pretty even matchup. You've got the Puck versus the Storm. Velodka versus Esk. Not too much to talk about here, John. Generally, this lane does end up uh, evening out quite nicely. Any any uh, points to add here? Yeah, I think the storm pulls ahead in general. Like, from what we've seen, the storm does have an easier time clearing out the waves. So, Ask will have to watch himself, especially as level three approaches. But overall, yeah, pretty passive. Maybe you can get a rotation out from your techies to relieve pressure. If not, then well, expect an even farming lane. Rune control important. And whoever gets advantage into six does feel better as that lane scales on. They do. Oh, have a look at that top lane. Of course, you are going to have our pug being played by Jubei and Boris against Ush and Skyward. And Boris should still be able to find a lot of farm on this Morphling. Don't think Tilted Boys will care too much for it, though, because they just want the farm on Ush. Look at those quick timings up on the Doom. Start that scaling. Eventually, just be able to just shut down the, the Morphling's net worth anyway, because you pop Doom and he's basically, basically a zero net worth hero once you've uh, committed that spell. So, they won't mind Boris getting that early start on the morph with, the, with an ICS, as long as the Doom is also finding the same. Man, you shouldn't be able to zone out the, the Doom too hard as Skyward's doing a great job of just running down Jubei. Uh, getting some good flame breaks off, trying to stall that out. We'll see as that lane develops down bot. A little bit more aggression coming out. Door already out of mana, still has a two mangos to play with it. Double decay is on little Nick. So that puts him at 500 HP, makes it uncomfy for him to try to trade. Gives Freta a lot of room to farm up on that AM. So that is actually, all you really want. You're not looking for double decay, you're just looking for two decays on Axe. I'm actually surprised he didn't jump on Axe either. Door will secure first blood here with the tombstone, but with the double decay he had, he had double mangoes plus a blood grenade, and he had another decay ready. So I think he actually could have killed Lil Nick there. But I suppose it would have been risky, so he plays it safe and goes for the easier kill on the techies. Yeah, I think that's fine. We can, this lane can get aggressive from the side of the American Goon, so all you want in Tilted Boys is a stable start. Just give Ferta as much as he can, already has the Ring of Health. So it shouldn't feel too bad. Should just be able to regen through the harassment that does come out. Door will need a reset at some point down to one mango. Not the best position to be in for the Undying. But you've already done your job in finding out for his blood. So you're more than happy to maybe look for a reset down the line. That should lead to perhaps a bottle top-up opportunity for Volodka there as well. Already off to a nice decent start here for Tilted Boys. With that for his blood. Kreta's having just as good of a time as Boris right now in terms of the lane. And Lil Nick is falling a little bit behind, but this is to be expected with the axe. It does take levels to get harassment up. Every, every time you say Lil Nick and then you follow up with the word little, it just makes me laugh. I, I don't know why. I feel like you're missing the opportunity to say Lil after Lil Nick. So uh, we are seeing he's falling a little bit behind, but yeah, he's he's having a good enough time. You just want the Vanguard. Once the Vanguard's up, you can rotate to the jungle, just take stacks. Not too big of a deal. As long as he doesn't get completely shut down. I think he's more than happy. So uh, they are trying to get some damage out here, but uh, the axe is having a very good time. And th this goes back to the techies, right? Like giant just being able to keep them back like this, it just makes the axe's life so easy. When you have one good support, the axe is a free lane. He's gonna have a very good game. 
Yeah, I, I, it's not the freest land, but it, it is a land that he's not being shoved away from. So I think that's more than you'd want. And the Axe can just flash farm from there, has access to the camps. And with level 2 spin, doesn't take too long to start to find that build up. And it's Ferta who has to watch himself. He's very low on HP, always constantly low, thanks to Giant just constantly applying that harassment on the double melee lane. And that's where things are a little bit rougher. Finding that first kill has helped them set up for an even laning start, but starting to find those openings now is a lot tougher with how Giant's playing. Just put the techies for it. No care in the oh, world. Giant. He's going to be all right for now. Ferte is going to move in. Tombstone dropped a little bit far away from the techies, so the chase is not going to be there. Little Nick, though, does need to be careful. Does have three zombies on top of him, but we'll just take them out. Not too much damage being dealt. It's a bit of a shame as well. When you miss the, the kill attempts with Tombstone in the laning phase, it's pretty detrimental. Because it's a 90 second cooldown at level 1. So for a minute and a half, they know that you're not going to be able to kill them with this AM Undying combo. So you, you really don't want to miss it. It's Ferte. Well, they're going to miss a blast off down a bot lane. So Ferte, Ferte is going to be fine. Does man to just sit back and farm. A little bit of an aggressive play down mid there from our storm, looking for the opportunity in S, but hard to pin down that puck so far. Top though, trading quite Ash. a bit. Dropping low, one charges, fairy fire was there, so Boris now needing to retreat to Skyward, pops the blood grenade, going after Jabay. Jabay still alive for now, but the flame break does connect. Ooh. And eventually they will secure us now. Boris, he's gonna be all right. The strength morph will be enough, but he was very low on strength. He had no more to morph. They could have kept going, but I think because the Firefly was running out, Skyward just said, screw it. Don't look at Skyward's inventory for a moment. He had three, four blood yep. grenades. My yep. god. He knows what he's doing. He just wants to run down. They secured a regen rune here as well. So Volodka should be able to pick himself up. A little bit of a tool to get aggressive if they want to. Not going to fully commit onto the puck. Esk did get a bottle top up from the sport TP's mid. And that's a lot of supports mid now, with both of the Giants, oh, both of the American Dune supports heading down that area. And they do have the Dream Call ready, but was read out very nicely here. Avalod could just plays in the jungle instead. And they might be able to collapse onto Skyward still, though. I mean, they might try. Jabay's been spotted here by Skyward. Ash is going to move in. Jabay's the one in trouble. Blastoff does at least land onto the Doom, so Boris is going to try and finish off the kill. Ash still surviving. Gets a Devour off, but finally goes down. And, ooh, Ash actually ends up, excuse me, rather Skyward ends up dropping down as well. I thought he'd at least have Jabay, but apparently it goes the other way. Radiant are scanning. A little bit of a good angle coming out there for the side of the American Goons. Just... It looked a little bit awkward running into the Batrider, but at the same time, uh, Skyward threw out his spells in a less ideal manner. He left his Doom isolated as well. They might be able to go for Lil Nick, though. But it's, it's a little it. bit too close to the tower as well. They, they, they went for that, but they didn't have Tombstone. So you can't dive the T1 tower without it. Make matters even worse if you're Tilted Boys, John, because they did end up dying top lane earlier, just a moment ago. They lost both their Wisdom Runes on Tilted Place, which is obviously huge, as we've seen through multiple series. Mid lane, Velodka. Aggressive jump in onto Giant. Disarm is there, though, with the Reactive Taser. He's got Blast Off available if he wants to commit it, but he will just back off, and Velodka will do the same. So the 8-minute Power Rune is going to spawn up, so it's going to be a very important rune for both the Puck and the Storm. See who gets luckier. Because both sides have secured one side each, and Esk Ooh. is going to be the lucky one. He'll get the haste from. Haste. Yeah, it's big. Should allow him a rotation up top. Bully out Ush once more. The Doom, I mean, it has the Vanguard, so it's a little bit tougher, but you've got the numbers here. Ush. Oh, they've certainly got the numbers. He's trying his best to find a way out of this scenario. Another blast there. Maybe a deny to come, but it doesn't seem like it. Giant will pick up the kill. Have a nice pick here for the techies. Nash. We, we do see him get focused quite a lot in most of the games from Tilted Boys that we do get to see. Uh, and this series seems to be no different thus far. Yeah, they're slowing down that Doom's pacing. Um, trying to go for the Midas build up, has the Vanguard up. 
It's a very free lane coming out here for Boris, which is of concern. That does Lock mean Lincoln is going to be out faster. Oh, he barely survived. Still was there with the Tombstone Soul Rip to ensure Volodka will make it out. Okay, he's had a couple of scenarios now where he's almost dropped, but his team's always there to just save save his ass. And well, this time around's no different. Volodka will survive another day, and he's still ahead in terms of net worth compared to the puck. So happy days for him. Yeah, he's having to play a little bit more on edge, but. Does manage to bail out. You also drag in Ush to get that safe mid EXP. So you should be able to scale into the Doom now quite nicely, have that threat for these, these team fights. The one thing these support rotations are doing is giving a lot of free space out for Ferte. Like he is still free farming on that AM down bot. He's not being contested. Should have that time into Battle Fury, no problem here. And once that's up and running, you can certainly kick up the farming pace. You can probably out farm the Morph by a good margin until the Morphling starts to get his stat items up down middle. Yes, yeah, Doom's out, Ush. Nine the spike, moves into the mid lane. Volodka had he no hesitation to zip in for that kill. Great pick up here from Tilted Boys. That'll secure Volodka a shield rune as well, which is, you know, not, not exactly the most favored rune for a Storm, but that might actually be the first rune he's actually been able to pick up this game. So I'm sure he's happy. He got the region a while ago, so it's his second rune. Not not the worst thing in the world. Not the most aggressive rune still. A little nick. Bottom lane, bit of a chase up. He's happy to fight back though. He has a Lotus inside the bag right now, and Door's the one to drop. You, you really can't underestimate how hard the axe is going to be to kill off after a landing stage like this. He has had a very good time. Ten armor at the moment on the uh, on the axe is not going to make it easy. Not with the Vanguard on top. And the AM just doesn't do much once you're out of mana. Like you can't really rip an Axe apart with the casual chainmail up. So Ferte doesn't have that many options. Can't even go for the Mana Void. Not the highest pool on the Axe to try to burn down. They will be able to go for a nice push onto that Tier 1. They spot out Skyward as well. Hanging back line. Does have the Lasso ready. Just no easy way of jumping in. They want Esk. The Puck's the important one to catch with the Lasso. Zip forward, Volodka trying to go after the Pugna first, so Jibay is going to get caught. The Crepify not going to help his cause, they will just pop the Mana Void. It is a 4 hero rotation for a position 5 kill, so it's not the greatest kill, but it does at least protect the tier 1 bottom tower and allows more time for Ferte to keep that farm going. Because these tier 1s, they are quite important for the AM in the early stages. Yeah, you need some room to farm. You're not going to be comfy jungling early on without the Battle Fury up. So, just need a little bit more time to get that going here for the side of Tilted Boys. Fourth four start. American Goons working this early aggression really well. They've bought a lot of space for Boris up top, man. This Morphling eclipsing the AM farm now should be able to find that Lincoln's timing on point. And there's no easy solution uh, for Boris at this point. And yeah, the Lincolns will have to block out a lot of single target spells. At the same time, it does make the jump in for Tilted Boys a lot tougher. And just more stats means that the AM, the Morphling starts to feel really happy when he does dig into that jungle. So you don't mind us at all for the Goons. Sure, yeah, the AM's farming, but Morphling's farming just as much. You're able to get a lot of good aggression out with your puck. You're able to start working your way towards the blink for little Nick. Already has the blade mail up. And they're, they're able to handle the Doom better than Tilted Voice is able to handle the Axe. So all things considered, you're... Power spikes coming out here for the goons is starting to feel a lot better in comparison to Tilted Boys right now. Absolutely. Very, very strong start for uh, the American goons. The thing is, with the draft of Tilted Boys, you, you've got to have faith that you can drag out this game long enough where this AM is just going to be a, a constant issue. So the, the split push potential of the draft of Tilted Boys is just massive with the Storm AM. Even the Batrider, of course, we've seen Skyward pushing lanes a lot in these uh in the tougher games he's had for tilted boys and you know the, the, these kind of games where just constant smooth push is happening it's uh they, those can be the ones that are kind of infuriating because those, those are the ones where you, you tend to make those small mistakes and open up the the kind of game for the other team is we are going to see the wisdom rune spawning in 25 looks like the the side of american goons are going to be trying to Secure both of them once again. 
They should be able to get away with this too. This will be the second time that they get both runes. Giant, immediate jump in on door. Door, not gonna make it out. He's down. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Yeah, they find a nice simple kill. This will lead into a nice simple wisdom rune pickup as well. Nothing being found by the side of Tilted Boys. They did smoke out with Ush and Skyward, but no one really showing as they are clumped up top. Maybe they can get this flank now onto Esk, but trying to gun for the puck is tougher. We do have Doom ready with no mobility on Ush, though. And yeah, not the easiest thing to get done. Coil snap mid lane. They do get the silence off, though, so Volodka in huge trouble will drop. Door could not actually get in range for the Soul Rip, but instead they'll lasso up the puck, so a bit of a direct trade looking to happen here as the puck has no way out, but a nice deny Ooh. from Boris. And how does he even time that one? Three heroes hitting a puck with Doom. And even from the low ground, he still manages the deny. Yeah. And he even had more strength up there as well. Not the smoothest right click time for the Morphling. But the patience pays off and so the boys find nothing. That's a lot of spells being committed. Lasso and Doom out to try to find that puck kill. Although... I mean, they'll try for no. Boris, but without the Doom, I, I don't think there's much of a chance. Bottom tower is under attack. Yeah, he he had a full wand as well, so the flash healing was there. Radiant's flash mana regen was on hand. Now you've got this big time lined up for little Nick. Has the blink up. Should be able to start setting these team fights now for the side of the American Goons. And for Tilted Boys, I mean they've they've got to fall back into their AM, right? Just believe that Ferta can make this work. Although I have to say playing from a position in behind here doesn't feel great. The Tilted Boys, because Ush will need space as well on the Midas Doom. You need some scaling up on your Storm. Like, all these heroes need some farm. And as long as the Goons keep applying that pressure, there might not be enough map space to sustain all of them. Big smoke rotation. American Goons looking to go through the rear. Go through the Radiant Triangle. In fact, they'll go towards the top lane where they might find the AM. Giant's going to have a Gander? No, he decides better of it. Little Nick looking towards the northern side of the map. Now we'll head down south. Southeast, or rather southwest. Ferte, gonna be spotted. Call is there. Blade Mail out. Can they secure? It seems like they should. Ferte is gone. Big team fight to break out though, perhaps. Tilted Boys looking for the retreat. S does have a dream core, just looking for the vision. We'll get it. Lil Nick does get the call as well. Meanwhile, Lasso has caught out Jabay, so they should at least find a pugna for their trouble, but they have lost their pos 3 Doom. It is not a good team fight thus far for Tilted Boys. Two calls down. One support has been lost for American Goons. And they're off. I mean, their, their timings are hit. They can continue this aggression. With this Doom AM side lane, you really can't fight back at the moment. It's very tough. I mean, when you have Doom up, maybe, but without the blink here, it, it feels really tough for us to find a way into these fights. Like, it's hard for oh, him to say. Uh, he wasn't expecting to stick around. Silence is out. Do they have the damage? Yes, they do. Lil Nick. Beautiful call. They'll try to secure at least an axe kill, but the life drain is there from Jabay. Call out again. They'll finally take him down, but what's it gonna cost? Skyward's gone. Ush is gone. Oh, it's painful to watch. And now a deny to come out of Jabay. Giant will take care of it. They only find an axe. The, the, this is, these are terrible sides here for, for Tilted Boys. John, this is not good at all. No, it's certainly not. You're losing your two cores that need farm in the Axe and the Aeon. Only Valodka having something to play with right now. I mean, they're gonna find Giant. Disarm is out, buys a bit of time, another Disarm out. Valodka eventually gets the kill. Won't be so lucky with the Courier though, it does survive on 3 HP. But they need everything they can get. I mean, they've, they've got to buy so much time. For Ferte. He's fallen so far behind this Morphling now. He's meant to be the flash farming hero. And as you can see by Dota Plus, 85% win chance right now for American Goons. I tend to agree with those statistics. Yeah, it's. Again, if Tilted Boys needed to have stronger lanes coming out, it feels like 
well, it certainly looks like that they haven't found that. At least Skyward has a blink, so maybe you can try to get a good blink lasso off. The drums aren't too far off either, so your support bat rider can start to have that big impact it needs to have in this game. It just doesn't feel like it's going to be big enough. Roche beginning here for the American Goons. Not the quickest Roche in the world, but also doesn't take too long. Should be able to just melt through this objective, have the secondary life ready. Start to look for the angles into these fights. Manta almost done now as well for good old Boris here. Smoke out from Tilted Boys. They might be able to find a follow-up fight, but even that's a little bit of a risk. It certainly is. Twin Gates to one. Oh, do they know Ferte's there? The Twin Gate usage, they're around the bottom lane. They seem to know the AM's around here somewhere. Ferte, Spidey senses might be tingling. And yeah, he'll make the retreat. He knows. Too many heroes are missing off the map. <laughs> Top lane, Jibay will be spotted. He'll go for a run. He has been slowed up though, and Sky, which should have no problems dealing with him. So he'll try to hand the kill over to the AM. Nice easy mana void there for Ferte to secure the kill. And they might be able to stick around for a tier 1 top tower. Only issue is, is American Goons are securing the bottom tier 2. So they are still finding the positive end to these trades. Yeah. More than happy to trade this way. The Goons taking complete control of the bot. Jungle's going to be big. There are some good wards coming out from Tilted Boyzo to keep cover of their top triangle. So they can leverage that tier 1 take very nicely with the additional camps. Mid lane. Ooh, Esk. Esk is fine. Three man coil. He just needs a bit of backup. Giant has the blast off, but won't bother. It's, like it's, it's just going to be Jabay and Giant. So Esk just going to get the life train to, to reset. And they don't really need to rush the game either. Like, Boris is... He's going to be huge on this, this Morphling. Doesn't feel like you have again, the cleanest answers. Like, you have to break Lincolns with Lasso or Doom and kind of get the next spell going on top of that. You're not ready to go on Ferta just yet. The Manta could be his timing to start contributing more in these fights, but even then, that's also just a little bit uncomfy. Still have three minutes left on the Aegis here for Boris. He's just shoving in bot. They could go for a mid push now as well. A little Nick just firing up for the BKB. Although, down in mid. Oh, they go for a bit of a chase, but American Goons may have gone a little bit deep. Lodka will break the Lincolns of Boris, but there's no initiation here for Ash. Can't really break the gap as the Doom to get the Doom off, and even then, Boris still looked pretty safe. They'll stick around for the mid tier 2 tower. They aren't looking to back off anytime soon, it seems. Radiance middle tower is under attack. And with that. No creep wave, they'll go into the Radiant Triangle instead. Ferte is doing his absolute best to, to catch up in the net worth department. Never feels good to be behind as an anti-mage, that's for sure. And Oh, even the Doom's net worth, like I, I didn't even pick up on this, but his net worth is so, so low. That's a Midas Devour Doom, sitting at not even 9k yet. Yeah, lagging behind severely. On that here, he hasn't had too much room to just AFK farm as well, Radiant's to be fair here to Ush. Has all of them going to Ferta. All the space they have, the little space they have has gone to the AM. They find little Nick. They do, little Nick. And for a bit of a run, Skyward should be able to control it. Lasso is available. Ferte is going to go ahead and take a, a Watcher. I guess there was no point chasing. They did never, they never got the Lasso off, so... Well, never mind. There's too much time being taken. Little Nick now looking at Ferte. Might find an AM. Call is there. Blade Mail not quite available, but there it is. Silence out, and that is the AM gone. That's my thing. Like, if you're backing off because you're afraid they've TP'd, how can you farm them? Look at this I mean, space as well. Boris. It's clearing out the tier 3. Well, there goes the tier 3 tower. American Goons really showing up today here for game one at least. Fantastic performance from them. Onto the top racks, they're, they're just not stopping. There's no AM, there's no Storm, which means there's no reason to back off. Yeah, they've, they've got Lasso Doom ready, but they couldn't get Lasso off to pop Lincolns and then 
Boris gets run away, you need to stack those spells perfectly after the Lincoln's break just to find that opening. 30 seconds weren't enough for Boris to feel secure. They take the melee racks, they back off. They respect the respawns on side of Tilted Boys, but just like that, off a fight on a different part of the map, freeing up the space for the Morphling, suddenly you have yourself an 11k advantage. You have one lane that's always going to be shoved in. Side of Tilted Boys losing even more map space that doesn't feel comfy for the AM. At their very least for Ferte, the Manta is coming up soon. So you can start to play split push a little bit, counteract that top movement. But it, it still doesn't feel comfy for the AM here. It, does, it doesn't feel like he's durable enough to stand up to Boris. See a smoke out from Tilted Boys though. Yeah, we do. It's not really amounting to much though. Like they'll go through the Radiant Jungle. Not find anything for their uh, for their time so far. Has been killed. Well, they might run into Jabay. Jabay is pretty far forward, but he'll get some wards down. Gets a D ward. We're well, trying to get a D ward off, but Skyward's going to get the lasso. They do find a punk. Oh. Bit of committal for that, but they'll get it done. They don't end up denying off their Observer Ward mid lane, so a bit of free gold sitting there for uh, for somebody. Mostly Jabay, who places the sentry. And, uh, I mean, American is, I don't think they're too concerned about Jabay dying. It's the pause 5 Pugna, not, not too big of a deal. No. He's doing his job, trying to copy the attention away, and just buying more space, buying a lot of room for them to keep this farm up. Well, Nick has his BKB ready. So the axe should be just set to go and blink out and start to get these plays opening up for the team. Side of Tilted Boys, well, again, if you're finding some farm, but it's only fair to... Tormentor being taken away now by the Goons as well. You'll be able to find that nice and free, going the way of Jube. Jube. Lane, they're having a look for the storm. The Lodka's able to get out. You've gotten to the point where now a full butterfly is up on Boris. So, uh, if you're having trouble dealing with him earlier, you're having a lot of trouble dealing with him now, I'll tell you. It's not going to be any easier with that butterfly up. Mid-tier 2 tower looking to go down as well. American Goons. Taking it very simply with the Pugna and the Blast. They've even mined up this whole high ground just to ensure that they they want to go for a fight here until the boys. They'll be forced into a very awkward position. I suppose as Tilted Boys, all you can do now is split push and buy more and more and more time. By more and more time, I mean a lot of time. Bottom lane, door's gone. So that was top lane. Yeah. Ah, can't, can't blink in for a Doom because he doesn't have blink. Nope. Still none of that farm ready. Still trying to work onto the Octarine. Should at least have that up. So lower cooldown Devour, lower cooldown Midas does feel good. Lower cooldown Doom, of course. But again, yeah, you need a blink BKB on the Doom. Maybe once that's up, you can play. I've been saying a lot of maybes here, Mike. It's it's, it's mm. a little bit of a reach at this point, but it's it not is. unplayable. It's a 10k lead for Goon. It's not the worst thing in the world, I suppose. It's looking pretty bad. Radiance Middle mm. Tower is under attack. Uh, you know, like maybe there comes a point where Ferte starts to fight back. Like he's got the the Eye of Scardi on the way, and by, by on the way, I do mean he's farming it up. It's getting pretty close now. That obviously can help. I still just don't believe he's gonna have the chance to just blink in and hit the the Morphling freely. That's kind of my issue. Like, Leonix just done such a fantastic job on the axe to always find the call on the AM. That I don't think it's going to be as simple as, hey guys, we've got Skadi, let's go kill Morph. And by the way, John, I'd hate to keep bringing this up, but I don't believe Tilted Boys have gotten away with one Wisdom Rune this game. Which it has been really detrimental for them. Because this has been no gameplay for their support. Yeah, I mean, you have a level 13 Batrider, a level 13 Undying. Even Jubei on Pugna, who's died multiple times, is level 14. Uh, 
and the giant as well has been doing a great job. Uh, the runes are big. That that really does hurt because both Bat Rider and Dying do want levels. They kind of want all their spells maxed out. It's not the best feeling in the world. Look at the positioning of Tilted Boys, uh, of the goons just ready to go high ground. Ush. There's nothing to push here. They want us. They're going to leave him though. I was sure that they were hoping for an AM pick off. Skyward, in the meantime, top left uh, corner of the map has been scanned. They know exactly where he is. And Skyward, he. Well, he's going to find out they're coming. Not much he could have done about that. Boris was in this. Shadowblade is up on the Morphling. And now Roshan is just completely open here for, uh, for American Goons. There's no real contest for it. Not going to take too long to clear out. Second rush of the game with a cheese. You have a lot of utility in that next fight. Inside of Tilted Boys and Ferte, again, he's got the Scotty up. So it is finished. You can try to dish some damage out onto the morph. Whether that's enough to deal with two lives in Boris, though, is a different question. You've got the BKB being completed by Osh first over the blink. So again, the Doom's not going to be able to reach out. Once the lasso break, once the Lincoln's break is there, although to be fair, Skyward can get that done solo with a four staff up. Again, some solutions presenting themselves, but it's all down to playing it out. If Tilted Boys can play that high ground defense where which they can shine in, then this game as it stalls can get a little bit awkward for the goons, although I will say we're reaching the point where puck scaling starts to kick in as well. You know, getting level 20, level 25 talents up. Start the gun for your shard, your start the gun for your ags. There's gonna be a lot more that the puck can't offer. It's also another hero that you have to worry about and trying to pull down. High ground opens up and Boris just gets started. That he does. No hesitation from Boris. It's BKB now up on Ash, so he's got a bit more survivability for this next fight. Jump in from Esk. Has found the Storm, but it's just going to be a bit of a warning shot here against the Storm Spirit. Horus, showing no fear, just going to waveform away for a moment. Goes back for the Rax, a very short range waveform. Ferte does deny the mid range <laughs> barracks, so there's that. Lasso out. They've caught the Morphling. There's no Strength Morph yet. Boris trying to get the Tombstone down. Won't. Instead, he'll go into the Strength Morph just to be able to survive the Onslaught. Keep in mind, he does have the Aegis up. Jabay, he'll be the first one to go down, but the immediate buyback is there on the Pugna. He's trying to escape. The zombies are chasing. It's a bit of an awkward escape here for Giant and Boris, but they'll turn around now, but a big Mana Void. It's going to find at least Giant, but they've lost Skyward. Verte, money to run. Fight's over. You got a couple supports. It was decent, but I actually can't tell if American Goons need to need to back off now. It seems like they can go high ground again for the final lane of Barracks. They're going to try. Oh. Boris, he won't even get doomed. Lunik is in. A great call out again. He found two targets, but he's getting taken down. The, the, the backup wasn't there. They didn't have the damage. Skyward. Skyward's going to die back on the Batrider. But I believe they've done enough to hold on to the final lane of Barracks. They were okay. In fact, they're going for more. S being targeted by Verte. He'll orb away. Verte instead will move on to Jabay, so that's a nice die back on the Pugna. And now the big one, Volodka, caught out, is probably just in fact, it's Boris who goes down. Volodka, the one to claim the kill. That's pretty huge. That's really awkward from Boris. He turned into AM. I believe he had a blink ready. He was about to blink out, but decides to go for the tombstone instead and dies trying to kill a tombstone off big win for the side of tilted boys they stay in this game with one racks left standing 4k lead still stands for the goons but it's not the biggest lead in the world now it's much more manageable for the side of tilted boys osh managing to get second position or third position in terms of overall farm here and you've equalized across all your course like look at the bars here mike 16k to 15k difference with osh and vlogka and that sandwich in between not much to speak of it's really down to boris and his farm and he can't afford to die like that he is the guy in the lead he's the guy in control even even if it's just a marginal lead now over your Aeon. but if you start giving these openings out 
to Tilted Boys. You know, with a Blink Doom ready, with his potential build up down the line for Vladko, with Sian Ags that could be available for him. The game does not simplify, and you will have to outplay them, which the goons have done for the most part, but it does get harder and harder when these tools are available for the boys, for the side of Tilted Boys. Uh, Tilted Boys is still in it. Still kicking. Wrecking goons. One racks away from almost having a GG call. Double damage rune has been spotted here from Giant. He'll protect that for his call. So like Boros will run over and pick that one up. And I wonder if he wants to rush for the high ground again with this double damage. He, he won't wait around for a bottle to be provided from Esk. So it seems like they do want to make the call to just go down towards that bottom lane and go high ground. In fact, they may go through the mid lane. Something that you probably won't expect here as Tilted Boys. But American Goons, they got very lucky with that rune, so they want to try and abuse it. Ush moving back in for the creep wave. Blastoff is there though, looking to burst him down. He'll get the BKB off, but the damage is pretty damn high. And Ush is down, Call is out. They've got the AM. Four staff away will protect for now, but he's still stunned up. He needs time to get out of there. Boris moving back in again onto the anti-mage, but they will protect. Verte is fine. The American Goons. The double damage is gone now. But they are in a 4v5 scenario, in their favor, that is. Being very patient. They'll move into the T3. Esk is out, right onto door, but will draw to away. Just chipping and chipping away at door. Forest feels extremely safe. Because Jabe is right behind him with the life drain. They'll get the T3 tower, and seems like that's going to be enough, though there is a jump in from Ferte onto Jabe. But he will be able to decrepify and just leave the area. On the brighter side for Tilted Boys, they will have an opportunity to take their Wisdom Room. Yeah, they've, they've got room for that if they can kind of slip out of that area. Uh oh, that's a lot of mines, but not enough. The Techies is down. Nice pick off here for, Lod for Velodka. Yeah, that is, it's something, you know, they're worth a lot of gold right now. Every single kill does count here for the side of Tilted Boys. That is quite the swing. 428 plus 525 going away of the Tilted Boys. And they will find her Wizard Rune if they eventually take a peek there. So they'll find her first of the game, which is, it's unfortunate it's her first, but at the least you find it this time. I do like the build up coming out from Tilted Boys. Mike Ags being worked on for Volubka. So again, going for that teamfight control now on the Storm. And that can easily open up these engagements. It's going to make it a lot tougher for Boris to try to weave his way in and out. Although he does have a full BKB ready. So as long as the Morphling's quick on the response, with a BKB, you should be able to buy enough space for, say, a commitment onto a kill, a commitment onto the objectives as well. I'm wondering when we see Boris's Ags, just having this additional utility and turning to... Even the Undying is not too bad. Like, we have seen him turn into Undying for the most part. 20% stats plus 40% status resist overall. Could be the way to go for Boris. Uh, maybe just uh, Ag's Blessing straight up. Kind of get you set up for that item there. What I'm laying another setup here. In the American goons, but they seem to be retreating, so not interested in trying to go for the fight. Tilted boys, on the other hand, seem like they wouldn't mind a, a quick scrap. Skyward has his smoke broken on Jibe. Ferte is going to rush forward. Jibe looks like he's going to be just fine to try and hide in the Roshan pit and go for a TP attempt. Ferte going to guess wrong. We're not going to the Roshan, so it does miss out on the, the free pug and the kill. At least Verte is top of the net worth board now, so, you know, he's, he's scary now as the AM. How scary is the question, but he is certainly scary. Yeah, full Abyssal Blade up and running for Verte. Even more control on that jump in. Fall through after the Lincoln's break. And it can get a little bit dicey for the side of the goons. Again, it's down to execution for the goons. They still have a slight lead up. They've got momentum their way. They have to secure this Roche. 
And they've still got boars around the area, but it is a quick spawn. You should be able to head up top. Wonder if they actually do want to take it now. It does feel like you'd be better off waiting for daytime getting the ags down south, but they prioritize that secondary life. This should be able to give them the opening for high ground as well, though Tilted Boys aren't too far out. They certainly are not. They're gonna move in. The Doom, Ash already being spotted. We'll be able to walk away. Verte looking to move in as well. As he does have the coil to expand. They run right into each other. They have found the targets. Volodka, he'll get a vortex off, but no, he's down. Lil Nick will duck right on him. Verte too low, has to blink out. Ash in the meantime, he's trying to run, but there's no escape from Boris. Lil Nix, I, I'm telling you, John, this actually, he's been a huge problem this game. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Yeah. His call to save, like that was really awkward. For Mask standing in that pit, not getting the dream call off early, gets abyssaled up. But the follow through wasn't there. We get the burst onto the storm. The Doom had to go out onto Lil Nick as well, which is just not ideal. So now they're gonna find themselves a Roshan. A little bit of a split coming out top, but not enough to really apply enough pressure. And Aegis, Cheese, and Refresh going the way of American Goons. A lot more you have to deal with on the Morphling. Setting up for that high ground. Full Hex up and running now as well. For Giant to help you keep keep that control onto the Storm. Keep that control onto the AM. If you do, do manage to catch him out. The tools are lining up for the Goons. And for the side of Tilted Boys. And that was probably their best shot. If they found better follow through to Ferte just running up like that, could have been, ended up being better. If you got the Doom off onto the Morphling, that fight probably doesn't even happen for the side of the Goons, but they angled themselves well and Tilted Boys aren't able to capitalize. They certainly are not. Into the bottom lane they go. Boris. Oh, Lincoln's broken. Lasso, drag back. Skyward trying to get into the fountain. They've got one life. Can we drag him into the fountain? Lil Nick, he's in. He's going to try and save the day. The call is there. Ush, no. Yes, he's down. Boris in the meantime, trying to get out. Does refresh. Volodka trying to deal with him. They've got Giant. The tech is just gone. On the run they are. Jabay should drop. And will. Esk will jump back in. And oh, now Lil Nick, call. he's got another call out. The AM has been caught. Verte is down. He could not blink away. They do at least kill off the axe. But they've still got to try and deal with Boris. He's the big problem. All the buybacks incoming. The one buyback that matters is not available right now. The AM. He is lacking 2k gold for it, John. That is not very good news for Tilted Boys. Well, that, that's just high ground now. Great positioning out from Goons. Lil Nick again saving that last fight. What a call. Oh. What the? Trying Lil Nick. Again. He's in with the call. He's just patiently waiting every single time. And GG's they called. Call. They have seen enough. Our boy Lil Nick has done it here in game one, Jonathan. A fantastic performance here from our accident. You know, I was saying before the draft started.